Okay, look like we are live. Uh, good afternoon, everyone, or morning, depending on who you are. Uh, my name is Ryan McCrary. I'm the CEO of McCrary Financial Solutions, where we provide financial solutions through financial literacy, entrepreneurship, and digital marketing. So I'm here with a great guest today. I'll bring her on in one second. I want to read her bio first. Um, so uh, we're going to talk with Tia Muhammad. So Tia Viona Muhammad is your source for strategies, tips, and resources on how to raise your child, your black child, to be a millionaire. This is extremely important, guys. We need to be raising our children to be young black millionaires, and I would say even billionaires. So she's an entrepreneur, host of the Raising Black Millionaires podcast, and author of the blog, Raising Black Millionaires, and the newly released and highly anticipated book and flashcards, which we will talk about today. Uh, the book is How to Raise Your Black Child to Be a Millionaire, Volume 1, which was reviewed in Black Enterprise as a must-read. As a wife, mother, daughter, and sister, her goal is to empower poor and middle-class parents with the child-rearing strategies of the wealthy that will raise upcoming generations to usher in and perpetuate intergenerational wealth and independence among Black people in America and all over the world. So without further ado, let me welcome Tia Muhammad. How are you doing today? I am, brother, I am copacetic. I am good. How are you this morning slash afternoon? <laughs> I'm doing great. I'm doing great. Excited to talk to you today. Talk about, you know, all the important information that you will share with us and your new uh, flashcards and stuff like that. But uh, before we do get started on that, and I read your bio a little bit, but I want people who aren't familiar with you, you know, just give another brief background on, you know, who you are, what you do, why you decided to start this amazing company, uh, and just go a little bit more in depth on that. Sure. <laughs> that That's easy. I, I can handle that question, brother. <laughs> I am Tia Fiona Muhammad. I founded Raising Black Millionaires several years ago after going to the Power Networking Conference. Anybody who has visited our blog or read the book or heard me speak, you know how fond I am of the Power Networking Conference. It's a conference I think that everybody should attend. Anybody looking like us should attend every year. Um, but when I went to this conference, it was the very first time I'd ever gone to a conference of this sort. And I was in this conference surrounded by millionaires. And to my knowledge, there was one billionaire in that room or in that conference. Um, and they all looked like me. They mm. all looked like us. And that was hugely impactful for me for two reasons. The first reason is because the environment was so full of love and a desire to help each other to to come up right uh to do well in whatever area of business it, we were in and so that was very inspiring but the other thing was that there were young people at this conference and i'm i mean from um 16 to 24 young people and it made me to think man these people are getting, these young people, these children, because I have a 25, should be 25 years old this in just a, a few days. Yeah. And she, I'm saying to myself, wow, if I had gotten what these children are getting right. at that age, oh, brother, like, <laughs> like it, the game would be a wrap, right? And so... Uh, it just made me to think that these young people are getting and what is it that these millionaires in this this environment received growing up that I didn't receive and my husband didn't receive. And by the way, what is it so that we can implement it with our children? So mm -hmm. one morning in the conference, it had to have been day two or day three, I woke up, you know, getting ready to get ready to go to the conference because it's like a four day conference. Right. And the idea came to mind and it was pressing. You know how you get an idea mm -hmm. and it won't let you alone. Right. You can't shake it. It just stays with you and it hits you really hard. And the idea was to interview these millionaires. If I could just get a few of them 
to interview and just find out what were the child rearing strategies that their parents used to get them to those degrees of success that they all in, experience and enjoy today and which of those same strategies they use in rearing their children to continue on their legacies, right? Um, and so I started asking folks if they would mind me interviewing them. And to my surprise, they were not only willing, but they were eager to share. And that's how we uh, came up with the How to Raise Your Black Child to Be a Millionaire, Child Room Secrets of the Black Elite book, volume one. Mm -hmm. um, so it's a compilation of my interviews, my conversations, really enriching conversations with these individuals. And um, from that, we had the blog. We developed a blog because parents wanted to know okay, this is some superb information. Okay, so how can I implement it, right? Or um, what's next? People kept, Tia, what's next? I need more, give me more. And so that's how we came with the blog and started writing articles uh, on RaisingBlackMillionaires.com. And then we started putting together some digital trainings for parents. Uh, we're working on a course for children and then we also came out with some of our our swag, like our millionaire in the making team that's nice. that we had. Uh, that's been a hit. And uh, one of the things that products we just came out with to really help people is, and we're super excited about. Everybody is loving the raising black millionaires flashcards, where we put in front of you, make it really easy and accessible for parents and children or educators and children to identify some of our current, still living today, black millionaires. So, and in the various industries that they made their millions in, right? Mm -hmm. So that it can, they can be tangible to the people. And so we also include like the, the handle, the social media handles for these individuals so that people can follow them in real time and see what magnificent things these people are doing and really train ourselves to think on a greater level. So that's in a nutshell how we got started. That's in a nutshell what, what we have going on. Mm, that's great. That gets me very excited. Uh, so I see a few people coming in. Uh, do me a favor, guys. If you're just tuning in, uh, I'm talking to Tia Muhammad. We're talking about her Raising Black Millionaires brand. So do me a favor, guys. Uh, when you first come in, drop a comment in. Drop some likes down. If you watch this on replay, type replay down. Type your name and where you're from. We need you to share these type of conversations. We need these conversations out to the masses. Because like she said, most of us didn't learn this stuff growing up. Me personally, I never was exposed to black millionaires or billionaires ever growing up. To me, you know, people that were black and, you know, were millionaires or had money to me were just entertainers or rappers or actors, stuff like that. You know, but we need to be exposed that, you know, there are hundreds, you know, thousands of black millionaires out here that never had to dribble a ball, never got a, you know, recording contract, uh, you know, never had to, you know, be an actor or go to Hollywood. And we need to understand these stories. So, you know, I, I love that you said that. So without giving away, of course, we want people to buy your books uh, and buy the flashcards. I'll put the link down there in a second, guys, for how you can get the flashcards and stuff. But, you know, I want you to say, like I said, without giving everything away, what were some of the traits of these black millionaires? Uh, you know, how they thought, you know, how they move, like you said, how they raised their children. Like I said, without giving everything away, what were some of the traits that you saw that maybe were different than what you see, you know, on just regular everyday people? Well, I'm going to tell you, one of the things that was a big deal and, and is the reason why we work, we produce the products that we produce is their parents made sure that they were surrounded by either real life people who look like them, who were doing great things, whether those things were in line with business and enterprising or or just a uh, community type of things to help and to provide services for our people. That was a big thing. That was a regular, um, a, a very common thread from 
the millionaires. The one of the other things was they had parents who not only required excellence from them, but they 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 helped them to be in positions where they forced them to think and problem solve on their own mm -hmm. instead of giving them the solution. So one of the things was, and they didn't limit them. So let me give you an example. Uh, when I had a conversation. Uh oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Whoops. Look like we lost her real quick. Um, she should come right back in, guys. Um, I think it showed up twice. So she should come right back in, guys. Do not go anywhere. But this is a very important conversation. I dropped the link down on how you can get her Raising Black Millionaires flashcards. Uh, please, please <laughs> do me a favor. Make sure you buy these flashcards for your children. Like I said, it's not really for me. Uh, it's not for her. It's for the legacy of your family. How many people here want to build generational wealth that they can pass down to their children? How many people want to be able to build generational wealth so they can pass it down to their children? Let me know in the chat. Let me know. Yes, say yes or say no. How many of y'all want to be able to build generational wealth for your children? Hey, Ryan, I'm sorry about that. No, it's all good. We got so, here. Yeah, go ahead. What, so one of the things was uh, Dr. Frazier made a point to make sure he said that, you know, we as parents, we have we have these children and we have visions for our children. Right. But we forget the fact that they have to go through their own personal journeys, mm -hmm. to go through the maturation process and then they can see what we see. <laughs> but they still yeah. need to see for themselves and be who they were. Right. Here to be, right, and so he was saying how when his children were coming up, and his children are ultra successful, right? One is a real estate developer, right? And so he was saying that um, they, when they would come up, and they they would say, "Hey, Dad, I was thinking about doing this, so I was doing thinking about doing that. I was thinking about, for instance, I was thinking about working at some taco taco joint that was in the neighborhood," mm -hmm. and he was like think about that pop and dr frazier was like that sounds interesting you should do it just go ahead and do it and let me know how it goes right now listen ryan listen, listen. <laughs> <laughs> as somebody who was at one time in my life a struggling single mom right divorcee all of that stuff like real life stuff right mm -hmm. i said as hard as i struggle working these jobs, plural, to take care of these children. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to do everything I can to set up this business so that they never have to work for anybody, ever. Like, right. oh, they will work <laughs> for themselves, point blank, period, right? But when he said that, he helped me to understand that um, because later on in his son's he went through that process and he started working for him in his company for a while. Right. Mm -hmm. um, but he helped me to understand that me just putting on my ch children, my vision for them and not allowing themselves to explore on their own. It prevents them from building the mental blocks that they need to build and the stamina that they need to build mm -hmm. to create whatever may be which may be way bigger than what I imagine for them to create helps them if, if I put on them what I have for them then I'm I'm likely stunting what they could probably do which may be exponentially greater than what I have in mind and so he said he would have them to just go ahead and try it that's what he did he encouraged them to try everything mm -hmm. as opposed to restricting them to just a few things on the list does that make sense yeah absolutely yeah that's powerful yeah and so that was a constant theme but another one i had i had a couple of them tell me that every summer they required that their children go somewhere abroad mm. for the summer <laughs> wow. they wanted them to understand 
their value and their sense of global placement, not just what I can do in the hood or not just what I can do in the city of St. Louis where I'm from, right? Or not just what I can do in my state or my country. I have the potential to impact the world. So Mm -hmm. let me go see how other cultures live, how other people think, and what other problems people have throughout the world because I may be able to create the solution to whatever those problems are. And I may be able to do that from either from the convenience of my home in the States, or I may be able to just simply pick up and live somewhere abroad for a few months out of the year or for the whole year or several years at a time. Right. Mm -hmm. And so things like that, things, just things that make your perspective expand. I got a lot of that kind of stuff from them in our conversations. Oh, wow. That is very, very powerful. Uh, that reminds me of like when I first read The Wealth Choice, uh, yeah. Dr. Des Kimbrough, when he, you know, sat down with I think hundreds or thousands of successful black millionaires, uh, just, just be able to pick their brain and see how they, like you said, done things that, you know, not necessarily were, you know, ordinary uh, things that were just outside the box. And like you said, you know, most of us, you know, didn't have a chance to experience or weren't even thinking about like how many of us had, you know, the opportunity to go abroad for an entire summer. You know, I, you know what I mean? I wish I would have. Uh, so I think that's very, very powerful. Um, so one of the questions I want to have is, you know, I feel like me and you are definitely in a, you know, in a similar space as far as teaching African-Americans about economics and the importance of building wealth and, you know, generating businesses and ownership and stuff like that. I guess, what are some of the challenges that you face with, you know, sharing this information and getting the rest of the community on board? Because we know, you know, these aren't mainstream conversations. You know, a lot of people that we talk to, you know, maybe challenge them to get them on board to see the value in this. So I guess what are some of the challenges that you have with trying to get people, you know, to buy into this philosophy or, you know, mindset, and how you overcome that? Yeah, that that's a, that there, you, you deserve some type of award for that question because <laughs> that, I mean, that's, that's the question. Right. Um, one, of, one of the things that I find that is a big thing is we'll have people who (laughs) it's a trip we'll have people who say they love the idea of raising a black millionaire right Mm -hmm. right um and and in many cases they don't care how it is you know we focus on raising black millionaires in the line of business right in non-entertainment or space right but they don't care how it happens. They That's true. Just yeah. want, <laughs> you know, they just want their child to make it and so they can get a house on the hill or whatever it is, just to have better, right? Mm-hmm. The thing that I'm learning is that people will go out, and I've met so many who will go and they will buy the book, just the book. They'll buy the book and either they won't read it yeah, yeah. or say to me, they're getting it to give to their child. <laughs> yes. I'm going to give it to my eighth grader. Okay, wait, hold on. The book is called How to Raise Your Black Child. Right. <laughs> it's not called How to Raise Yourself to Be a Black Child. <laughs> right, right. right. right? Like, you want your child to raise themselves, right? But what I realized in digging deeper, parents often and educators too, often undervalue themselves as a resource. Mm-hmm. And, 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 a, and they don't really believe that they have the ability to give to the children what it is that they need to attain that type of wealth. Because they're looking at themselves and they're like, I have not achieved. Right, that. right. So how is it I'm gonna teach my child anything that's going to result in them being wealthy but even be even a little bit deeper than that really just lies the the problem of self-confidence because think about it out of all the people that i've interviewed as a matter of fact i just got through interviewing gene waddy just on friday Mm. right gene waddy look him up he's from he's the founder and ceo of diversant 
Diversant is the top IT staffing agency, black owned staffing agency here in the US. Wow. They they hire um uh IT professionals who from various different ethnic backgrounds, but they hire them and they hire them for Fortune 500 companies. Wow. Now, now, one of the things that Gene told me was, he said, listen, my family was poor. Mm-hmm. And when I reflect on all of the conversations I've had, all of, of the people I've interviewed, they came from either poor or just doing all right mm-hmm. as families. Like we, we making doc, Dr. Roberts, uh, Mike Roberts, he says all the time, he says, we weren't poor, we weren't rich, but I forgot how he said, but we made it. We will, we will yeah, make it. Yeah. Something like that, right? And so all I'm saying is those parents had a degree of self-confidence and integrity that enabled them to still pour into their children whatever mm-hmm. it was they needed just character wise and just internally strengthening wise to help them to desire and go after far greater than they had even imagined they could attain right and so mm-hmm. i think that today's parents we have to uh, we have to learn how to dig deeper and dig beyond our own personal prep and be able to see the forest for the trees because we get caught up in our what we see in our personal physical realities and then it causes us to limit our own ability to give greater to our children and we don't even know it so at the bottom at the base of it at at the root of it i believe it's a big self-confidence um a real big self-confidence issue and a, a a feeling of being inept and unable to be able to, or unable to be able to give to our children what they need. And it's totally, it's totally untrue. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. I agree 100%. Yeah. And I, you know, the way I feel as well is we need to understand what wealth is. You know, a lot of us, we don't even understand like what wealth is. Wealth is not necessarily just having a whole bunch of money in your hand, taking pictures on Instagram, you know, having the best car or that or best house to understand what wealth is. And the first principle of wealth is, Wealth is generational. You rarely ever see a case where someone built massive amounts of wealth within like a few years, within five years, even 10. It usually comes over a generation, 20, 30, 40 years. Uh, And then once you have the wealth, you need to protect it. You know, another thing I think is important is like mindset. You know, that is the exact reason why I wrote my book. It's called Mind Over Money, because a lot of us don't realize that, you know, uh, being rich or, you know, having riches or wealth, that's a mindset. You know, you can have a poverty, you can have a poor mindset. If everything you're thinking about on a daily basis is negative, but, you know, I don't have enough, I don't have yeah. this, I don't have that, then you're never going to have it. That's why, yeah. I tell people, you know, people come to me all the time, they send me messages, emails, consultations, everything. And I say, no matter what situation you are currently in, you know, mm-hmm. in five, 10, 20 years from now, no matter what situation you're in, your situation could always be better if you start planning now. Yes. Plan and seeds now. If you start investing now in your children, not just financially, but you know, mentally and stuff like that. If you start, you know, raising them to be a black million, if you start putting this information into the head, you start putting a few dollars into an investment portfolio, you start giving them access to these resources, these books, these flashcards, stuff like that. You can't tell me that by the time your child grows up in 10, 20, 30, 40 years, you know, they'll be in the same situation that you're currently in, no matter what poverty stricken whatever situation that you're in you can't tell me that they'll be in the same situation but i think it's important like you said you know don't miss the forest for the trees just because you see currently you may not have a lot of money you need to look down the future and you need to understand what wealth is and how wealth is really built yeah so, you know yeah i don't know your thoughts on that but yeah, um, yeah if i can add to that like two absolutely. things man, that what you said made me think about um First, you know, I was talking to Deborah Owen mm-hmm. um, from Wealth, I think it's called Wealth University. Wealthy U, yeah, yeah, yeah. Wealthy you. Thank Shout you. Out to her. You. Yes, absolutely. And um, another conversation 
that I learned so much from. But one of the things she said that really struck me was she said, you know, millionaire status is really the new middle class. Mm. So mm. it's like she said, like, and basically implying that basically everything else really is 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 po- impoverished, right? And if you think about it, the way the economy is. Um, and and how challenging it is just to maintain when you don't have that type of income. Uh, it's a very true and very tangible tangible statement to understand, right? Um, and then the other thing is we really underestimate the value of small steps, exactly. right? Because and and I think what you said is so key because it really, it really demonstrates that. Um, I think that we underestimate that and we underestimate the value of just making, just prioritizing, getting a little, learning something new every single day. Right. Right. Because if, if our people knew something as small as um, the fact that, you're paying likely from your job, you're paying on a burial policy for about twenty thousand mm-hmm. dollars. And you don't understand that you could get you can just get a term policy worth two hundred fifty thousand dollars paying the same amount. Mm. Mm. Stuff like that, like Stuff like that, like Amelia Thomas and yep. um, the Coakleys from Coakley Financial. Yep. Yep. Uh, Renee, I was just talking to Renee last week. Like stuff like that, just, just the slightest bit of information. Now that information took all of two seconds for me to share with you. Right. Right. It took me all of 10 seconds to learn it, just to hear about it. Right. And if we were to be vigilant just in our everyday personal lives about learning, whether we're reading something or listening to a new podcast or um, putting ourselves into environments where this kind of conversation is going on. And we, we may feel like the dumbest people in the room and get used to that and be good with that. Right. <laughs> <laughs> like your goal should be to be the most unintelligent person in the room. Right. And keep yourself in those environments, right? Like if we just become vigilant about doing that, then we'll be able to see that we can make small incremental changes and allow our perspective to shift just enough that those little steps and those little changes will cause drastic effects, drastic improvements on not only the condition of our lives um, in the long run, but in the way we rear our children, the perspectives that we give them. One of the things that, you know, I, I, I noticed that with um, our children, when my husband and I were, had started a, a business that we had started a few years ago, and it was just really draining all of our time. It was everything. Like we were working 18 hour days, right? Jointly. It was ridiculous. And our children were, was, were seeing us work like this. And that's when it clicked. And they would be like, oh, y'all need to rest. This is our children telling us, y'all need to rest. Wow. Right. <laughs> but, right. but the the light bulb that went off for us was we needed to not give them the perspective that working for yourself is all grimy and nothing good. Yeah, that's, true. Yeah, that's true. Right. So we had to make sure that, and I went in the point of this part, this part of the conversation is all about perspective, right? Mm-hmm. Building the right perspective for ourselves and building the right perspective for our children. Right. And our perspective should be ever evolving. Right. And so with that, we realized that, we needed to make sure that we shaped a better perspective for them so that they could see the fruit of the labor and not just the labor right. in all of this intensity. So that's when we realized, okay, well, we got to have bomb family vacations. Like we can't, like the days of just taking a road trip to St. Louis are over. <laughs> like 
them just going to Six Flags. No, we got to show them that there is, there's living. Like, like the purpose of us working so hard mm -hmm. is not just so we can keep our heads down and work. The purpose right. of us working so hard is so that we, we can live. Like we can experience living where we can take the time to, to just think. We can just lay out on the beach and just think. Right. Like just think. think. <laughs> <laughs> So it's so like, yes, sir. I just, I just wanted to share that that what you said to what you just said a few moments ago, all of that came to mind when you said that, brother. Mm, that's great. I hope y'all are getting these nuggets that she's dropping. I really hope y'all taking notes and really uh, getting these nuggets that she's dropping. If you're just tuning in, I'm talking to Tia Muhammad. She is the CEO of Raising Black Millionaires a brand, and she just launched her Raising Black Millionaires flashcards. I'll put the link down there. You guys need to get them. Uh, again, if you watch this on replay, type replay down in the chat, type your name and where you're from. Please get some likes up, some hearts up. Uh, we need you to share this out. Put this on your business page, your personal page, put it in your Facebook group. She is sharing these jewels with you right now. Uh, so, you know, the thing she just shared was if you're at your job, you know, you know, when you sign up for your job, you get your benefits package, you get your 401k. They ask you your life insurance, stuff like that. But what you're probably paying on your job is probably, you know, what do you say, 10, you know, 20, $25,000 policy when you could be paying that same amount and get a term policy and have like a quarter million dollars, God forbid you passed away. Uh, but you need to understand that information. Information is crucial. And especially in today's day and age, we're in the information age. So there's really no excuse. Everybody that obviously, damn near everybody has a smartphone, but are you using it to, you know, for knowledge or just using it for entertainment? Are you just using it for consumption or are you using it, you know, to produce something, produce content, produce information, share your message out with the world? So just a few other questions before we let you get back to your busy day. Um, so uh, first, you know, I want to know, you know, uh, who else, you know, is in, you know, part of the flashcards deck? Who else can we look for? Uh, I know you dropped a few names and people to be interviewed and stuff like that. Uh, so just who are some other black millionaires that are in the deck and just other people that you've had the chance to interview and, you know, how was it, you know, setting up those interviews? Because me, you know, I'm thinking other people might be thinking, you know, how how would I even start to get access to a black millionaire to be able to interview them and stuff like that? You know, how does that process even begin? Well, you know, <laughs> you got to put yourself where they are. True. It's just, I mean, like, <laughs> that was like, that was one of the biggest lessons I learned. These, these people, they don't live like somewhere in the sky in this on this elite cloud like that's not how that works right <laughs> so we just got to put ourselves in the right. environment they are and then we have to love ourselves enough to pay for access into the room right because those places where they are they're at networking events right and networking event the networking conference is probably right. gonna cost 100 bucks yeah. <laughs> right <laughs> Right. Some of them, you might be knocking on a grand. You might be knocking on a grand to get there, right? But the relationships are priceless. Um, that's that's one way. Another way is to just reach out to them. You know how folks say they slide into the DM. DM, yeah, right, right. They, see, you, you can. You can't be scared to do it. You can't be scared to do it. Can't be scared at all. You you can. Like there is value in sliding into the DM for non-recreational purposes. You understand? Right. <laughs> so, so you might have to just do, do a little research to find out their handle, uh, which is one of the reasons why we put that kind of information on the cards, just so that you could you could feel that these people are more tangible. But the other thing is just look up an email address. Do a simple Google search. Do a little research, right? Mm -hmm. We research everything that we want to know about. Um, whether, you know, if we want to know who um, Deborah, Desperate Housewife, newly divorced Desperate Housewife, uh, Shanene is dating, like we Google that. So just right. Google right. the CEO of such and such company and see if you can find an email address. If you can't find that email address, Find, call up and see if you can get his assistance email address or mm -hmm. administrative assistance email, who, whoever, right? That that's that's really how I went after it and that's how I continue to go after it when I don't 
have someone who can introduce me to these people. Um, who's in the deck? Oh my! <laughs> or you might just have to wait to get your you get your deck to find out. <laughs> I would give you a little bit. I would give you a little bit. So we have so many beautiful. Oh man, brother! Beautiful pioneering like earth shattering folks in this deck we have um mammon powers who is the uh legacy uh ceo because his father founded powers and sons construction uh company back in i want to say it was in 67 when he mm. it may have been 87 when he founded the company right mm. Um, he now his company is run by him, his brother. He has two children who operate different regions for the company, oh, wow. not just offices. I'm saying regions, my brother. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we wow, got, we have folks like we got your boy Freddie, Freddie Taylor. Like, oh, Earth okay, Earth. shout out to Freddie. <laughs> yeah, man, feel that. We got we have Lamar and Ronnie Tyler from Shout out to the Tylers, of course. <laughs> Blackandberrywithkids.com and TSP Traffic Sales and Profit. We have them in the deck. Uh oh God, we have the the brilliant Janice Bryant Howroy yes. in the deck. Yeah. We have listen, listen, let me tell you something. We designed this deck so that you could learn about a new black millionaire every week. Mm. So there are 52 features in this deck, wow. right? Men and women, some couples. And so it's, it's so rich with people. Like we have the opportunity with these Raising Black Millionaires cards to learn about black history being made in real time that's the objective right Ooh, yeah because we don't have to stay in this little box um of february right right, right. Like, seriously we, look we're black folks we make history daily right, right? <laughs> seriously like, that's just what we do it's just it's just who we are so with that, uh, we got we have so many people, brother. Listen, I I know so many people, and so many of them I still personally haven't met. I've communicated with some via email, mm -hmm. um, some on the phone. Like I said, I just met Gene Waddy over the phone the on last Friday, but I've been talking to his assistant for months. I'm like, mm -hmm. I'm about to call her and invite her to the family barbecue. Wow, like, right, right. Right. <laughs> But there are a lot of really beautiful, beautiful people. Um, I'm looking forward to connecting with Dr. Kimbrough, uh, Dennis Kimbrough from That's The Well right. Choice. Because in truth, him and a brother named Brother Bedford, Brother Bedford is in the deck. Um, brother Bedford is phenomenal. He's a phenomenal um, online marketer. Uh, he actually... He, I read a book that he published years ago called Conversations with Black, uh, Black Millionaire Entrepreneurs. Mm -hmm. You should, you should Google that. Um, and you can, you can check him out at brotherbedford.com. But in that, that series, he did something similar. He interviewed Black entrepreneurs who had attain millionaire statuses really learning about their experience as entrepreneurs right um but he and uh dr kimbro really really inspired me in this work and helped me to shape shape the work right because with that book the wealth choice that you talked about um he really highlighted how extensive his research was he had some i think it took him about 10 years to do that book yeah I because so. of the yeah. extensive research that he right. did it was very specific to not interview any entertainers mm -hmm. and any athletes, athletes right. right so it's a beautiful thing um 
it's it's a beautiful thing. So I'm just saying it because I I look forward to we keep we keep texting back and forth trying to trying to figure out when we gonna make this interview happen because I want to have them in an, in volume two for raising for how to raise your black child to be a millionaire, right? Mm. Um, but if you don't have that book, first of all, black folks, listen, you have to get the wealth choice. You have to get yeah. the wealth choice have to have your children to read the wealth choice because they need to see it needs to be tangible for them wow. one of the reasons why um the loss of the bombing in oklahoma mm -hmm. and the loss of black wall street is so tragic for our experience is because it it took away for us a very solid visibility of what living could be like mm -hmm. living well could right. be like right without worrying about how you're going to maintain your bills right you know what i mean and that's something that we all have to get to so i'm just saying you got to get that book and you got to you have to prioritize feeding on resources like that type of like the wealth choice like um, the raising black millionaires flashcards, just things that help us to see ourselves in our limitless potential. So mm -hmm. that's my point on that. Thank you for that. That is amazing. Like you sharing so much information. Uh, you name dropped a lot of people that you know. Everybody watching, I don't know if y'all know who all those people are. Even the people that we know personally, like Lamar and Ronnie and the Copleys and Freddie, who has a multi-million dollar urban intellectuals business around flashcards and black history and stuff like that. <laughs> so make sure y'all are Googling, researching, finding who these people are, introducing them to your kids, sharing this information, and most importantly, doing your part in this wealth building game to build wealth. So the last thing I just want you to share with everybody, just, you know, what are some wealth tips that people can take away from this, you know, tangible things that people can do right now? Of course, you're going to get the flashcards. I'll put the link down there in there. Uh, you can go to bit.ly slash RBM flashcards, bit.ly slash RBM flashcards. Make sure you get your, uh, make sure you get your, uh, deck of flashcards, 52 decks. So that's one flash card a week. I'm going to purchase mine for my kids and myself. Uh, so just please, uh, you know, give us some last tips on, you know, tangible things people can do right now to start building wealth, you know, right now, even, you know, no matter what financial situation they're currently in, what are some things people can do right now to start building wealth and get on this journey? Yeah, for sure. So um, I do want to go back and highlight what we talked about before, what you told them to do, to go go to your human resources department. If you don't really know what your insurance policy and that stuff is really looking like, check into it and see how you can make mm -hmm. some adjustments. Yeah, definitely. That's, that's one thing. The second thing is, I just want to reiterate, listen, if you just, if you don't spend another dime and you just use your tools that you have at your disposal for for good. I had to tell my son, use your powers <laughs> for good. <laughs> but if you just get, if you make a, a, a concentrated effort every day to just look up an article or a podcast, right. start listening to, don't listen to the Raising Black Millionaires podcast, listen to the Black Entrepreneur Blueprint uh, podcast. We have we have that founder in the deck too. Listen to one of my favorite podcasts. It's not a black podcast, but it's very informative. Uh, the How I Built This podcast by mm. it's an indoor podcast. Guy Guy somebody is is the host of that podcast. Just listen to things like that, and then after you do that, I don't care if you're just reading a a chapter or just a few paragraphs a day just something to get yourselves outside of your present um reality right just so that you can expand and then after you do that sit down and at dinner and talk with your children so one of the things that i think that it's it's really become a lost art is that dinner time conversation yeah right absolutely like most of us, and it's it's baffling to me because we've been doing it forever, right? But my husband works with, he works with um, troubled youth, right? And 
he talks to them. Um, he shares with them like just he just be telling them all our business. So he tells <laughs> them that we have at dinner. And one of the things that's a consistent thing for them is they like y'all sit down and eat together. Right. Yeah, right. Yeah. At a table. At a table, like not on your uh, phone, not on your smartphone, and watching something while you eating. You know what I mean? Oh, y'all don't allow phones at the table. Like it, it blows their mind and or their minds. And there are there's research done on the value of sitting down and having dinner as a family in terms of how it affects self-esteem, how it affects mm. a, per- a person's ability to see themselves as a success, how it affects the way they dream and aspire for greater, wow. and how it affects the overall community. There, are, There's research done on this. So Google that. <laughs> right Mm. but do just do those two things or three things just do those three things and allow and just watch the shift in not only your personal uh household economics but watch the shift in the way your family your overall family uh perspectives how that changes and then trip off how your conversations will change because your your perspective is changing. Your mm. thought patterns are changing. And then as mm. your thought patterns change and your your view broadens, then that's when you really start seeing some real stuff happen. Mm. That's deep. I don't know about y'all, but I just learned a whole lot of information just with this <laughs> conversation alone. And I'm being dead serious. Like, I hope y'all taking notes. I hope y'all taking heed to this life-changing information that she's sharing. Um, because like she said, you know, all of this, basically if this is a culture, you know, wealth building is culture with yourself and your family. So we need to get on board with this generational wealth wave uh, and make sure we're implementing this into our children so we can truly build legacy, truly build a legacy. So I want to yeah. thank you again so much for coming on, sharing this information with the people. Um, again, if you want to uh, get your uh, flashcards, 52 deck flashcards, the big ones too, you know, uh, so, you know, they're more visible to your children. Um, you know, she shared a few people that are in the flashcard, uh, some heavy hitters in there. I'm going to get my pack as well. Um, I just want to thank you again for coming on and sharing this information with people. Listen, thank you, Ryan. Like, I, I deeply appreciate you. I'm super excited about the our new relationship yeah, like for good. those of you that don't know this man he took he knocked out for me can i tell him yeah <laughs> go ahead you can tell him <laughs> out this funnel for a sister because your girl i can do a funnel but it ain't gonna look nothing like <laughs> my brother and he knocked that thing out for me. I, he asked me for what I need, what he what he needed. I gave it to him. And that brother, he was taking no names. He knocked that thing out for me. And it's a it, it's it, the work that he's done for me has been phenomenal. And I really appreciate him. So this is a relationship that I'm super excited to have uh, to have have started. And I, I look forward to uh, raising black millionaires just as a, a company being able to do collaborate with you uh in the future and and we're here for whatever you need brother so thank you so much for having me on oh thank you so much so that's it for today guys again if you want to get the raising black millionaires flashcards the link is in there if you watch this on replay do me a favor and type replay down type your name and where you're tuning in from uh to get the flashcards you can go to bit.ly slash rbm flashcards That's bit.ly slash RBM flash. Everyone have an amazing day.